Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Cinepax just released a sequel to their well-known music video title pack and today we're going to be jumping into DaVinci Resolve and showing you how to make these three cool effects with those titles and also how to use them inside Fusion and do some more advanced work with them. If you haven't gotten the pack already, head on over to Cinepax.com where you can find a huge array of different assets, both free and paid. So feel free to browse whatever you want, add it to your cart, and just put in some of your information and then you can get your download link from there. Today we'll be using the Title Effects Pack version 2. Before installing the pack or doing anything inside DaVinci Resolve, the first thing you need to click on is the font links disclaimer. You need to install each and every one of these fonts, otherwise they will show up black inside of DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci won't even load them. So I know this can be time consuming, but you have to click on these, go to the download links and download them. To speed up this process, what you're going to want to do is open up those zip files and instead of right clicking on this and clicking install, create a new folder on your desktop just like this, and then drag the font files inside of this new folder. Once you have them all inside one single folder on your desktop, then select all of them, right click, and click install. That way you don't have to do that install button individually, that'll make it go a lot faster. Once that's done, then we can head on over to DaVinci Resolve, head on to the Fusion tab right here, and when you open up the Fusion tab, you're going to find the grid. And all you got to do is drag the .drfx file included in the pack onto the grid area of Fusion. You'll see that it will ask you to install. In my case, it's asking me to overwrite since I already have it installed. And once you do that, your pack is installed. Back in the edit page, you can find your titles under effects. Then go down to toolbox, uh, titles, and here's the music video pack too and you can browse each and every single one of these. Within seconds, you can have amazing customized titles. You just drag it in, you can change the font size, you can change the tracking, the line spacing for each one of these individual uh, titles. Uh, you can even change the font if you want to. Um, and then we can type in whatever you want. So, the great outdoors. All right, perfect. And just like that, we have an awesome title. Now, each of these titles all look great here. This is all a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio. However, if you notice, we go to like a widescreen footage clip like this, um, you'll notice that the way that the titles are designed, they'll try to stretch. In some cases, that'll work great. For example, right here, this is awesome. It stretches to fit this wide aspect ratio. But in many cases, it does not look great. And you'll see all of our text starts overlapping. So let me show you how to fix that. The first option is to just make a new timeline that we're going to use to nest our title. So we'll just call this nested title. And then we're going to uncheck use project settings and change the format to something, anything basically with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That is what these titles were designed for. So we'll do a 4K Ultra HD and then click create. And then with this new timeline, now we will drag our um, title into this pack. And then all we got to do is go back to our ultra wide timeline and just nest our nested title on top of it. And you'll see that it now maintains a proper uh, formatting and doesn't stretch in any strange ways. Then if you want to edit these titles, all you have to do is open up your nested title. You can make all your changes here. Um, in order to see those changes live, you probably should go to the effects under generators and just add maybe like a solid color so you can see it, um, change it to white, and now we can see it while we make all of our changes. Then once you're done, just disable that track so it's transparent when it nests back into your ultra wide timeline. Now the second solution would be to actually take this title inside of Fusion. So when you have your title right here, we can click on this little Fusion button here and it's going to open up your title inside of Fusion. Now with our grid here, let me also get rid of the clips, we can double click on this group and it's going to reveal basically every node of this title here. So your green nodes are essentially background nodes or titles. Um, and then the transform nodes are essentially going to be transforming any of these items. So for example, here's our circle color. So if we want to transform that, we click on the transform node that it's connected to, and then we can now manually stretch it however we want. Um, the same goes for um, our title. So let's click on like our Cinepax presets, which is the studio credit. And you'll see it gives us a little controller. And we can also edit any of the attributes inside the inspector window here. If I click on any of these titles, uh, we have full control over moving and spacing any of them out. And just like that, now we've adjusted it to fit our custom aspect ratio. If you've never worked inside of Fusion, I highly suggest looking up some tutorials because that's going to give you advanced control over any of the, our title packs here. 
All right, and that's about it in Fusion. Let's get into some more cool title effects. Okay, so for first title, I'm gonna use Classic One, and I'm gonna lay it out right here. I'm gonna go for kind of an analogous color scheme. So I'm gonna basically just pick random colors from our background, so it'll kind of mix well. So we'll just like pick uh, something dark. Let's go right here. And then for our next one, we'll pick screen color, maybe something blue. Pick screen color again, and kind of something blue again. Maybe they'll all be in slightly different, slightly different tones. And then pick another screen color right here. And then we'll do that again for the frame color. Perfect. Okay, then maybe I'll just add a, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a retro effect with a drop shadow. So we'll go to effects, we'll type in drop shadow. It's gonna be under open effects, drag that in. And then we'll go to effects. Let's bring our uh, blur all the way down, our drop angle. We'll leave it at the same, bring our drop distance in, and then bring our shadow strength down, bring it in a little bit more, and then let's also change the color of the shadow to something blue as well. So let's go with kind of a darker blue right, right there. Okay, cool, that's looking neat. Um, however, I kind of want to give it a little bit of a shake effect. So I'm going to go to a camera shake. And the point of this camera shake is I want to give it more of a jitter like it's filmic. So I don't want to actually give it like a camera shake. I want it to look like it's jittering, like almost a film sort of displacement effect. So uh, film is only in a vertical axis. So I'm going to get rid of the pan amplitude. Then I'm going to bring down the motion scale tremendously. So it's only going to move like maybe half a pixel. Um, and then we're going to bring up the speed scale to a ton. And then I want it to be very random. So I'm going to bring up the randomness scale and I'm going to bring up the pause length. So it kind of gets, uh, it pauses tremendously. So if we play that, okay, it's looking cool, but I think the most, uh, the speed scale needs to be brought down and not the speed scale, the motion scale needs to be brought down. So let's play that. And now we're getting a very slight jittle, jitter. It's super subtle. Um, but this goes well because the actual footage itself also jitters if you look at the, the background footage as well. The final thing I want to do is you'll notice there's this cool sunset that the footage starts off with and then it goes away. So let's take this inside of Fusion. So we'll just go to uh, click on our title, go to video, and back here we can click our Fusion. Okay, so I'm going to press shift space bar to bring up this window and type in BG to create a background. This is essentially just a black plate of whatever color we want. However, in order to reveal our title, let's also plug it into the mask, which is our blue node right here. And you'll see now it creates this title. And our background is essentially just a color that we can just adjust whatever we want. Um, and it's being merged on top of our uh, base title right here. Now, what we're gonna do is change this to a gradient. So now we can adjust the colors. And I'm gonna change the white gradient here to something that matches our sunset color. So right around there, a little too saturated. Right there, perfect. Then let me move this gradient around to match our sunset with our footage. And right around there looks pretty good. So then let's go to our merge node and it's not revealing the colors underneath it. So in order to do that, let's change this to screen. And now you can see there's our base colors underneath it. All right, that's looking pretty cool, but what I wanna do is animate this. So I'm gonna move inside of our edit page to where the sunset disappears, which is right here. So if I open it in Fusion, our timeline is in the same position. So that means let's go to our background node and keyframe all of our aspects right here and move this out of the way. So like right there. So now it's gone. And then let's go to our front of the frame, our front of our footage and move them back into position because when the footage starts, we want the sunset to be revealed. So we'll put it right there. And if we scroll, uh, scroll through here, you'll see that now it's animated and that will line up with our footage. And there we go. The first title is done and out of the way. For our second title, I want to go back into Fusion, and I want to create a cool sort of chrome outline here. So I color graded this footage to be black and white, and I want to match that style. So let's go ahead and uh, open it up in Fusion again, and let's close out our spline editor. Okay, so what we're going to do, don't have anything selected, and just simply press Shift Spacebar to add an alpha, alpha, matte, shrink, and glow. And basically what this is going to do is if we connect this node, 
and if I press 1 to preview it right here, it's going to shrink, and if I, I need to change this to grow, it's going to shrink or grow our selection. So there we go. Now this is going to allow us to, if we press shift spacebar and add a background node to basically create another color, delete this merge node, we don't need it, we're going to plug it into the mask of the background node, um, that's going to allow us to now basically create a color or an outline which then all we're going to do is plug this back into our base node it's going to merge it on top of it but we don't want it on top we want it in the back press ctrl t to swap the inputs and there we go now we've created an outline maybe let's shrink this down a little bit more so our outline is skinnier right here and then click on our background node and let's change this to a gradient again and just like that we now have this awesome chrome effect which we can animate if we want to. So let's go ahead and maybe put it right there. Let's maybe right around here. We'll go ahead and add some keyframes to the start and the end. Go to the beginning of our frame and maybe stretch this way out of, out of frame. So if we press play, it's gonna cycle in and then possibly at the very end of our footage, let's have it kind of rotate around and stretch like so. So it's kind of slowly animating around. And then to make this all smooth, open up the spline editor, grab all of these and press shift S. And there you go. We've got a really cool looking metal chrome effect going on. For our last effect, I want to bring in our speeder title here. And as you can see, this doesn't really fit well in our aspect ratio. So we're going to edit it and do animations inside of. So here inside of Fusion, let's first thing open up and adjust our title so it fits properly in this aspect ratio. All we need to do for this one is just scale down our title size. So if I bring down the font size, there you go. It fits and everything looks good again. Now for this title, I want to make an animation where everything slides in like it's a fast race car. So I'm going to go to right around here, maybe frame 20, um, so it's a fast animation. And I'm going to grab our path 1, path 2, I mean, and I'm going to keyframe the center. And then I'm going to go to path 1, and I'm going to do the same there. And then I'm also going to go to studio credit. I'm going to double click this, and I'm going to keyframe in the layout tab, the center there. And in the director credit, I'm going to keyframe the center here. So now everything is keyframed. So I'm going to go back to the first frame now, and I'm going to grab each one of these individually, and I'm going to slide them out of frame, like right there. Path two, I'm going to slide that out of frame and leave room for the titles. So then now this will follow it out of frame, so right there. And then this is going to follow it out of frame as well. So if I press, if I scroll through, now we have a cool slide in animation. I also want it to drift throughout the entirety of the title. So I might grab these and just hand animate them towards, towards the end as well. So let's just slide them out a little bit towards, towards the end of the clip and then grab this one as well. Slide it this way a little bit and grab studio credit and slide it that way just a little bit so now if I press play they slide in and they keep moving throughout the entire footage after that let's grab our title let's go to right when these slide in and let's give it a keyframe on our size and our layout here so there so what we're gonna do here is well actually I'll keyframe this size instead um, I'm gonna go backwards a few frames and I'm gonna scale this down to zero and we're just gonna do a little hand animation so it like jitters in. So it comes in, then we're gonna give it a shake up, then it go a frame forward, shake down, then we're gonna go here, then we're gonna give it a big jitter up, and then one more frame, maybe change the just size just slightly, go here, go like that, and if we press play, bam. Now we get this really cool shaking in effect. To top it all off, I'm gonna select our node, we're going to apply an invert, so invert, invert color, and that's going to basically create, invert all the colors that we make, so it's going to make it white, but the problem is it's changing the entire footage, so we're going to also plug it into the mask, that way it only affects our title area. And the final effect that we're going to do is add a duplicate node, duplicate. This is going to give it a cool retro effect, 
So if we go to the middle of our animation, we click the duplicate node, we're going to add a time offset, which is going to duplicate. Basically, it's going to create a delay of a frame for each one of our animations. And we're going to bring up the copies to maybe four or whatever. Um, each time this happens, though, we want to bring down the gain. So it kind of has an echoing effect, just like that. But the other thing is, by having the invert node, if we bring down like our blue gain or something, let's bring down like our, our green and red gain, that's going to create a blue effect. Or purple, there we go. You can see that it's starting to ghost with a purple effect. And let's go ahead and just press play, and now you're going to watch what happens when we, when we play this. We get a cool ghosting effect, and then our title will basically have this awesome replicating effect. Now I kind of want to, let me adjust the, the gain, there we go, so I'm going to bring down the green gain and the blue gain, that way you can kind of differentiate them, and that looks a lot better. And if we press play, there we go, now you get a cool thing, and let's go ahead and add a glow on top of this, just like that, and we're going to, we'll keyframe the glow. So I'm going to bring this in, I'm going to keyframe it right around here, both of these values, when it hits here, I want the glow to be very strong, so right there, and then I want it to die out almost completely. Right around, right around there. So, and then right, right around here before it locks in, I want the glow to be pretty, pretty light. So let's bring down the glow, and then if we press play, there we go. Now we get a cool flash. And there we go, we got an awesome retro title effect pack. Okay, I love that effect, it's super neat. Let me know if you find these effects just as cool inside the comments. Also make sure to share this video and subscribe to our channel if you want more tutorials and awesome packs just like this. With that, peace and have a good one guys, bye.